This 62-year-old woman has a unilateral elevation of intraocular pressure to 38 millimeters of mercury. You can see on red reflex that she has a classic bullseye appearance on her anterior lens capsule with a frosted glass look in the periphery and centrally and a loosened zone in between. This is very typical of pseudoexfoliation. In her angle she has a brown sugar-like pigmentation. You can also see that she has a Sampolaces line which is a non-specific accumulation of pigment at Schwalbe's line. This patient has a very nice corneal wedge and in fact her wedge appears in the section on difficult angles. You can see with a very narrow beam that the corneal wedge points to Schwalbe's line and helps to differentiate the pigmentation at Schwalbe's line from the pigmentation within the trabecular meshwork. Now with the beam wide open, one can see through the dilated pupil that there is a frosting of pseudoexfoliative material on the lens annules. Here again one can see this material on the zonules quite clearly. The sample Lacey's line probably occurs at this area because of the change in curvature causing material to be deposited at the level of Schwalbe's line. This brown sugar pigmentation that we see in pseudoexfoliation as opposed to the black pigmentation in pigmentary glaucoma is probably due to the admixture of the pigment from the posterior iris with this whitish pseudoexfoliative material. Here you can see the zonules beautifully with this accumulation of material typical of pseudoexfoliation. As we know, pseudoexfoliation weakens the zonules and makes cataract surgery much more difficult in people with this disease. We have an interest in using infrared sensitive cameras to image the iris and have noticed that in people with pseudoexfoliation one often sees this pattern of alternating light and dark bands on infrared video translumination. This particular patient is an outstanding example of this iris translumination pattern.